Invite. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Invite Sent. Thank you so much for being here today. We're on LinkedIn Live. It is Wednesday, April 6, 10 a.m. Central in the Central Time Zone. And if you're anywhere else, well, good morning. And I am so excited that we're all here to uh, enjoy a little gameplay. Thanks for being here, those who are already in the chat. I appreciate you guys. You know, this is Invite Sent. It's a live streaming show where we interview people and play video games. And we have a very special guest today, an uh, amazing, amazing person who is just a leader in the Scholastic Esports space, also in the tech space. I'm going to bring in a very special guest to the show, Mr. Bradford Harris. How are you, sir? All right, I'm unmuted, so can you hear? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Hello. All right, I'm doing great. <laughs> awesome. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. This I'm is, wonderful. This is, <laughs> look, this is a life-changing event event like we always cross paths and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's like it's like it, it's like how I, how I was doing with uh James O'Hagan's interview like it took us about a, a we've always talked but it was it was like almost like a year later he's probably gonna uh, send it since I know it wasn't uh before we actually had a, <laughs> I was on his his uh, podcast but this is awesome this is I'm really excited Man, we're gonna have some fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna learn a lot about you, and uh, we're gonna play some some oh, Knockout City. You're gonna learn. I don't know how hey. much you wanna learn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only know I only know what I know from social and videos, and so I wanna learn learn even more. But oh man, we're already we're already kind of playing here. Yeah. Yeah. I think you'll have to make a uh, a private one v one match for us. And oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to oh, turn yeah. my sound effects volume down. Yeah. I'm excited. We got some Knockout um, City. This is great. I really love I really love this game. Um, mm -hmm. This game, I think it's, it's going to be um, free to play in June, if I'm not oh, okay. mistaken. That's good. That's um, good. I hope... I, uh, I thought I, uh, I thought I saw that. Um, that's definitely huge. I know a lot of my uh, uh, of our cohorts mm -hmm. are definitely uh, getting their middle school kids to play. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. this is definitely going to be um, uh, a contender. I feel in the Scholastic Esports space, yeah. and it's it's just a fun, friendly game. Um, you know, you can play this on. You can play this online, and you can mm -hmm. play this in the gym. So it's like our imitating <laughs> yeah. life. So I like that. I like that's that. why I love it. And I, I'm a person that loves creating characters. I don't know about you, Bubba, but mm -hmm. I love creating characters mm -hmm. in the likeness of me. Mm -hmm. I'm very big on that. Characters Understand that. represent represent me. So that's why I kind of like took time and created the character of, of who I mm -hmm. that kind of looks like me. I'm really big on that. And, uh, I think that's very important. So that's why I kind of gravitate yeah. to this game. Am I the best player in this game? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think but... you're right. This game did this game did a good job at not just being the typical uh, Viking looking uh, white blonde hair, blue eyed uh, avatar. I think they did a good job at having a lot more diversity than a lot of games do. Now, there's a lot of oh, games yeah. I think out there that that definitely give you all the abilities to change. But I mean. These these feel more like diversity defaults. Like oh, the, yeah. like like it's oh, not yeah. like you gotta go all the way down the list to find somebody who looks like you. I feel oh, like yeah, that's absolutely. a that's a plus. And I believe the yeah. the game developers, um, I believe I can't remember his name. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, but he is definitely not a white man. And um, I, no, I, I know I he. Yeah, I I know Marcus Howard interviewed him um, a while back when the game came out, and I know we were doing something in 2021 about this game and accessibility, and he was all hyping it up. And I, I know he interviewed the guy. I I, I don't want to butcher his name, and I don't want to say the wrong right. nationality either, but I'll find right. it. Yeah. Well, let's jump. Yeah. Let's jump in. Let's jump in. Um, do you want a one v one private match? Yes, we can do that. Let me see okay. if I'm doing it right. And forgive me, everybody, if I, <laughs> if I fumble through this. So let me go into, what is it? We're going to go and play. We're going to do a private match here. Still. Did I pass up the 1v1? There it is. So we can do a face-off. 
Or would okay. you do a party face off? Which one would do you want? Well, to do? I sh what's the party face off? Are there bots? Uh, party face off three. Uh, party for two, three KOs wins the round. Two rounds with wins the match includes danger zone, no warnings, all special balls. Okay, so that means like all the balls that like all right, that's all cool. the big yeah. magic balls. Is pretty let's cool. do it. This yeah. one is the no special balls. Well, yeah, let's do the um the one with the special ones. All right. Yeah. Oh. No. oh. What did I do? Oh, <laughs> oh! I'm in. I walked into. <laughs> I walked into walked that dodgeball and it put oh. me inside of it. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. Yep. Chris Turner does say it's free to play in June. Yep. Looks like. Okay. So, All right. I think. There you go. I'm, I'm in. All right. So while we're playing, I'm gonna ask you a tough questions. So tell me, oh, what was your what was your go to game as a kid? Well, I will tell you this. So, mm -hmm. I remember. I don't know how old you are, but I I'm remember. I'm 40 this year. All right, all right, 40. I'll be four. I'll be 44 in November. There we go. I was. I will never forget second grade, uh -huh. and I was going to Orlando, Florida, Disney, uh, going to Disney World for the first time, and Disney World was not what mm. it is, what it was, it, what it is today. Okay. So. I will never forget going into the arcade room. Just going in there and tell mom I'm going to the arcade room. And I remember seeing um, Super Mario Brothers for the very first time. And I was like, what yeah. is this? Yeah. And I honestly I don't think I don't think uh, <laughs> I don't think kids get that light like how mm. I think we got that light back then but I remember uh -huh. just going and playing it didn't know what this was and I just re was remember getting addicted to needing a whole bunch of quarters because uh, of course yeah. you know uh -huh. you, you, you need to go left and right all the you need to go all the way left or right and so I I, I had to keep playing it so after we went home I needed to go to an arcade and figure out where this Mario game was. And then lo and behold, you know, what is it? A couple years later, Nintendo came out and then there was uh, Super Mario Brothers. So. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That's, that's when I really started to fall with it. And then that's when, you know, you had to convince your parents, <laughs> hey, I want a console in the house. And you know, that's when, that's when you give the presentation of why it's important, da da da. Hey, I don't have to go to the arcade. You don't, have yeah. to, you don't have to give quarters. And they're wondering why does it cost, why does it cost $50 for a game and, <laughs> and all this kind of stuff. So Were they, what, was, was Mario $50 back? I know every game is like $59, $60. What, what was a Mario game back then? That's a good question. I can't remember. Um, I need somebody. I need somebody yeah. to research <laughs> that. But yeah. I'm sure it was expensive for what mm -hmm. it was at the time because it was new. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. An, an arcade machine at your house. Right. And so, um, in my attic, I, I I still have those cartridges. I have Legend of Zelda and all those games. Ooh, still. wow. But um, but that was when I really first fell in love with games, and. I haven't stopped playing ever since, but like, I will tell you, you know, your parents think, oh, this is gonna be a waste of time, you know, all mm -hmm. the typical stuff, because they don't, they, they never saw it like that. You know, well now flash forward to mm -hmm. years later, and in my house, <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a Switch, I have a, yeah. a gaming PC, I have yep. an Xbox. There are two PlayStation 5s that my daughter and my son oh, have, one in her room. Nice. One in her room, one in his. One is digital, one is disc. Um, there is another switch in my uh, in my bedroom that my son gave to me because he got the OL OLD. So I like have every console known uh -huh. to man now. Nice. And so, but oh, no. oops, uh, <laughs> my family, my my family has grown up with it, mm -hmm, and so mm -hmm. we have these conversations now. But like, my favorite games are like the horror genre game just because I just I love survival games. Oh yeah. You were but, playing Dead uh, by Daylight you said, right? Yes. Recently? Um, I love Dead by Daylight. And the reason why I love that because we talked about diversity in games and that's uh -huh. that's very diverse. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. No, it's not an esports game. Sure. But I just love those like what do you do in the survival mode? And my kids 
introduced me to that. Of course, you know, I don't play games as often as I should, but when I'm in my office that I'm in right now, uh -huh. um, I hear my kids screaming and shouting and playing, and I'm going, what are y'all doing? And so I'll just watch, and I watch how they interact and how they, mm -hmm. you know, talk to each other in the game. And so that's how they'll introduce mm -hmm. me to some of these games. And we'll laugh and play and joke. And it's 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 really fun. So you won because I got distracted. <laughs> that's, that, that's why I bring people on. It's just it's just an ego boost for me. It's to just distract people <laughs> so I can beat them you in know, video games. But, um, yeah, <laughs> but um, my uh, I think my love for video games, mm -hmm. you know, runs all the way down to my second grade self. I had no mm. idea that it was going to take me to where at 10 o'clock central talking to you. <laughs> I mean, right. at, at, at 43 years old, I had no idea that my job, uh, that my job was going to be, you know, talking about technology and video games. If you would have told me, you know, as a second grader that, you know, that's what your career is going to be. Uh, that would have been a hard pill, pill to swallow. Mm -hmm. um, but now it's, it's all I talk about. Now, do I, again, do I play it mm. all the time? Mm, not necessarily, but like I kind of live vicariously through my kids. One right. room, he, my son's playing his games. Another room, my daughter's playing hers. And, and in another room, my wife's playing Candy Crush. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, nice. it's, it's, it's all different types of gaming going on in my house. So, how old are your I'm kids? Really enjoying it. My kids are 18 and 20. Okay. So they've grown up, mm -hmm. they've grown up with me in gaming. I mean, yeah. I will tell you, like, I don't know if you remember. Do you remember the uh, the little console called V Smile? V Smile, man, that doesn't okay. ring a bell. It's really super old. Okay, so it's like a little console, and it, it like it teaches it teaches you you. you you strategies it's like for little kids like this is like a leap pad like like, like my kids yeah kind of okay yeah kinda. yeah yeah okay. and so but it looks like a gaming console uh -huh. so the cool thing is, is like you know you can sit next to mommy and daddy while they play their play their video games mm -hmm. and so that's why i got it you know they can act like they're playing their video games and you can play yours so i let them play that huh. because obviously you know yeah. they can't understand the marios the the uh, the Ninja Gaidens and all that kind of stuff. They don't know how to do that yet, <laughs> or you don't want them to play. That right, right. That's right that's it. Yet. That's it. Right. That's that's the you point know, right there. You know, you're you're not ready for that yet. But yeah. like, I will never forget. I was working at. I, I mean, I got, I I remember when at my next console. I mean, mm -hmm. yes, I got a Super Nintendo and all that. But like, the next big console was when. I was in college, and that's when uh, I went to my friend's dorm room, and I saw Resident Evil for the first time. The oh first one. yes, yes. But and, yes. and Resident Evil. Man. And I was like, "What is this? This is on PlayStation, the very first the PlayStation. first PlayStation one, yeah." And I'm going, "What is this? What is going on? Oh, this is on PlayStation. What is PlayStation?" <laughs> and so, of course, I had <laughs> to scoop that up. Uh -huh. You know, you know, you get introduced right. to these. You get introduced to these things by walking into a space. Mm -hmm. Every time I, every time I'm introduced to a game, it's because I'm walking into it, not because mm -hmm. somebody is talking to me about it. I'm always walking into it, and so that's how I kind of like fell in love with like yeah. the horror genre survival survival game. So I got that, and we started playing that. Um, you know, years later, yeah. then I got an Xbox. And Ooh. I remember do, get I was working at GameStop. See, I've always been around games. Yeah. And I, I oh, you worked at GameStop. Now you said you I worked, worked at Game? GameStop. Oh man! Mm -hmm. Hey, ready up. Let's let's jump in another one and tell me okay. more about. So, how old were you when when you worked at GameStop? Um, High school, college? No, I was. How do we ready up? Uh, uh I, I don't know. X. Down the bottom right. Yeah. You checked. You check on. How do I check on mine? Uh, mine was mine was down. I had like hit minus button down the bottom right. It said ready up. I guess some on the screen, or we can start back over. I don't know if it. Try all the buttons. That's how I play video games sometimes. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Especially like in a like a League of Legends match where I'm just right in the middle of a fight, not knowing what I'm doing. 
that's that's a pretty common thing. Or I've been playing a lot of Fortnite this this last two weeks, and just on on keyboard you have a ton of options, and if you mistakenly uh, mistakenly messed up in built or whatever instead of shooting, yeah, that's that's a pretty common thing. But I'm glad there's no builds right now. Yeah, right. I wanted to find out more about that. I, I, why, why do I not know how to ready up on That's okay. Well, we just go back to the... Uh, the man just or, or bring group to hide out. Again. Oh, here we go. Bring group to hide out. There we go. Yeah, the like, the, uh, yeah. the no build the noble no build Fortnite is a ton of fun. I've been very very much into it the last two weeks. I I have to I have to um, really get into that. No, I worked in uh, yeah, GameStop. GameStop. Gosh, I was in my I want to say my late twenties. Okay. Uh, my kid my oh my god my kids were little bitty babies. Okay. <laughs> wow. Little bitty babies. And so that's when I, when, you know, what was it, the Xbox 360 mm -hmm. came out, and I scooped that up, or the, was it the very first one? One of the two. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't remember. But I do remember, like, the long lines getting that. Um, <laughs> I remember uh, when, I think it was Katrina happened, and I remember everybody yeah. just wanted to scoop that up. Um, um, amazing time for that. Yeah. But um, just people just wanted to just you know interact. But w when my kids were little and I had the Xbox, remember that comp that that controller was huge. And so that was yeah. my first time really introducing them to okay, you want to you want to play console gaming? Let's play some mm -hmm. console gaming. And I don't remember what game we were playing, but. The controller was so big, and that's when they looked at the YXAB, and they were trying to, you know, maneuver through everything, and they got frustrated. And so I'm like, really, Kiki and Haha, -ha, like, oh, you will never get this, Haha, -ha, you know. Uh, at least I I'll, I'll be playing games for a good, a good amount of years. You'll never get it. Now, flash four years later, and they have surpassed their dad. You know, my my nice. daughter plays Gen my daughter plays Genshin Impact. My son plays Dragon Ball Z. He ed he oh. edits animations stuff. My daughter does all her stuff, and it's it's phenomenal. Like just watching what they do, they are. I don't consider them um, competitors, mm -hmm. uh, but I consider them serious gamers. My daughter will go in with the with the games that she plays. Yeah, and she does heavy research. Really? Uh, with her, with her stuff, like you will see her with a book out, like like for her, Genshin Impact is serious. Where like she'll like have it on PC, she'll have it on console, she'll have it on her phone, yeah, and she'll like do research on like you know I don't know I don't know the game very well, but like how to where to get her characters and money and all that kind of stuff. Right, son. When he plays like his Dragon Ball Z game, he spends hours on that game, and so it's it's nothing for him to when he's playing with his friends. Mm -hmm. It's not casual game for him. He he told me one day like, really? Dad, I spent five hundred hours on this game. I'm like, Are you serious? Wow, that's awesome. And so, wow. I, and so when I watch and I listen to the, their vocabulary, I'm like, You are like, this is this is serious for you now they have their mm -hmm. own they have their own like outside gaming time but when i sit and watch how they play it's a different mm -hmm. world and the way they communicate it's different and they have the v we have oculus too i forgot to mention we all have oculus right oh, okay so, nice <laughs> but i I'm, I'm barely on the oculus what but, games um, do you have on there i don't ha you know i don't have any games on there because I, I uh not because i don't want to it's because i just haven't had time to really get into it just sure. because i'm so busy but again i live vicariously through my family my kids and i watch what they do and, and we talk about like what games um we play now for my work we mm -hmm. meet in in meta we meet in there it has really? meetings which is really oh yes sir that's uh, so that's so in shi you guys meet where, where do so, you meet? What, what, what platform are so you So the, the Horizon part, 
where you just go in, in meetings and just sit and mm -hmm. have conversations. We we will go and have we'll sometimes we'll put in our um we'll put on the VR headset and just yeah. have conversations Great. in there and just and just talk about it. It's in, it's important because we got to be able to talk about. I know we just jump from one thing to the other. No, I, I love it. Well, Chris but, uh, Turner's here in the chat. I know he's gonna he's gonna chime in. He loves the metaverse just as much as uh, many other people. Well, okay, because we. We need to learn about what this is. Um, am I an expert in the metaverse? Absolutely not. But if we're talking to schools, if we're talking to institutions, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if we're talking to government sectors about meta and learn what it is, we've got to be able to be immersed in it and, and talk about it. Now, were we required to get VR headsets? No. But it's it's something that we we really wanted to do so every now and then we'll go and meet in that space yeah and just that's really cool and, and and see what it's like to be in that space and talk about how it feels mm -hmm. and so we have a really great time in there yeah and so the, we're able to talk to our customers a, a, about that in, in the edtech space you know that's come a long way yeah. since you know those cardboard um glasses <laughs> <laughs> So uh, laughing. <laughs> no, but I know. I know what you're talking about. The uh, Mike Russell did chime in saying that um, it was the games on Nintendo were 39.99, and you could get Mario, uh, a Nintendo, and Duck Hunt for 199. I do remember that. I think it's a package I got. You got Mario and Duck Hunt, and you Wait, got the Mario gun. Mario was forty dollars. Wait, forty dollars was a lot for a game though back then. If you, if, if it you was take a step back, mm -hmm. like if I if we go to if we go to like to GameStop now and mm -hmm. uh, a good game is $40. Like, oh, okay, that's a steal. I can do $40. Now, a really good <laughs> game with a D with a DLC and all that, yeah. that's like 100 bucks. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it better be worth your time. So... Mm -hmm. This is I why I go to the library and I we I, I can rent games. I've We had a Switch for Christmas for my kids. And I didn't want to just buy the games. And plus... I'm a little disappointed Switch doesn't have many more of the one console multiplayer games. Like, you have to have multiple consoles to really, really do a lot of the games. And yeah. so we struggle. I got three boys, uh, 12, 10, and 6. And so <laughs> them trying to fight over one game with one player is not fun. So, uh, But we go to the library, and we check out games for, like, two weeks and try them out. And sometimes return ones right away, or sometimes we have to renew them because they're good. But... Then we'll buy them if we really like them. But that that's something I don't know if it was around. You know, I think I used to. I think it was Blockbuster used to had used to go and yes, sir. Check out my like kids, rent an Xbox, right? My kids will never know that feeling of going <laughs> to go and rent something like and like and everything. You be literally gone. make you literally make it a Blockbuster <laughs> night. You like when it's Friday and you just go and rent. Like I think the last time I remember. Uh, there's a documentary on the very last blockbuster which mm -hmm, is really good mm -hmm, yeah um like the i will never forget my kids were very little and our blockbuster closed down and i know mm -hmm. i spent like 200 dollars in there just getting movies uh just because <laughs> wow. it was just it was yeah. just there and my kids were very small but they didn't understand that concept concept of right. friday night and um yeah get the okay, popcorn the get the snacks yeah, and, and, and you gotta get there, and, get there early and, so things are returned because people return them the day before before everybody else rented them. Yeah, they 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 never they never understood that at all. But like you know, it's funny that you said you know the disc thing. So my my console, the Switch. Mm -hmm. I remember I got into this discussion with James, mm -hmm. and I know he does digital, and, I, and so. My struggle is is real with that because I I still have a strong hold for the disc. Now my Xbox that I have is digital, that but that took me a long time. To oh, oh, accept. having the physical, yeah, compared to the, the digital physical. download. Yes, hmm. that took me a long time to 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 accept. Now part of it was. I need to hurt. I need to go ahead and get that that Xbox because I, I have no patience for for it not being here. Mm -hmm. But I'm glad I got it because it fits my lifestyle. Um, because yeah. I, I, bar I, I barely have time to play. But I was in really deep conversations with like 
with like I'm, James, I think I maybe I had a conversation with Chris at one point, but a lot of people like, well, why should I go digital? I even have conversations with people at GameStop. I'm like, you don't understand like when you are a kid in my yeah. generation and I'm a gamer going to I'm gonna date myself, you guys, those who are in this chat. Y'all remember that store called Babbage's? Y'all remember that? Oh yeah. Um uh, when your mom would take go to the mall, she goes, you know, to her you know, to her to, to her her stores and you were finally old enough to say, you know, I don't wanna go to the ladies section. Can I just go to Babbage's? And I, and you would spend the day there just looking at games. <laughs> you went That's for the funny. experience. Yeah, I see I'm dating myself. You went for an experience. And so I would tell the people like, so if I go digital, what's my per what's my purpose in coming to the store now? Yeah. I, there there's no reason for me to come here anymore. And those were the, those were the kind of things that kind of hurt my heart because I'm no longer, you know, coming to buy anything from you. Like, mm -hmm. I'm when I I like to hold, I like to hold the game in my hands. I like to read it. I like yeah. to decide whether yeah. I'm going to talk about it. I like to talk to people like you. If you're in that space saying, hey, that game is great, or hey, that game is garbage, and here's why, da 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 or hey, that game has an M rating, do you know that? And, uh, you know, things like that, you know, yes, you can go online and get all that, but like having those critical conversations in the stores was key for me. And going digital meant that I was going to lose all that to a, to a point. And I was trying to explain, you know, to somebody that was 20 something that. Mm -hmm. And he said, he goes, you know, I get it. I get that 100%. He goes, but at the same time, when you go digital, you have these other experiences where, like, you know, you can get the game earlier. Or, yeah. you know, when you don't have to worry about um, waiting to put another disc in. I'm like, yeah, you're right, because I didn't understand it until I was actually playing uh Spider-Man Miles Morales, and I was right. like, I, I just switched, and I went, oh, this is why you go digital, because you don't have to worry about getting up and switching to another game, uh, and so I'm like, I get it. Now my daughter, gotcha. she's yeah. 20, that makes sense. she's pro, she's pro, she's pro disc still, she wants to get a disc. My son, he's 18, he's all digital, but I, I use the Nintendo Switch to audition myself to go to Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And, and I only did that because now I'm not I mean, believe it or not, I mean I don't play a lot of Nintendo games. And I started with Nintendo. <laughs> but like Nintendo there's not a lot of genres in Nintendo that I really truly play. So I'm like, well I'll just use this one as like my audition. Plus I have a dog that chews games. And those parts are small. <laughs> right, they are yes, they are so tiny. So I'm yeah. like I'm gonna go digital I'm gonna go digital with this. Mm -hmm. So and plus um this helps too when I'm on when I'm since I'm traveling now, Bubba. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um that makes a huge difference. I don't have to like fumble through my stuff and now I don't have to worry about oh my god, yeah. I just I just lost. I just Dude. lost Fortnite. I left. <laughs> I left it in New York. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna have to buy it again because I was in this conference playing. And somebody saw my Fortnite. <laughs> this kind of this kind of reminds me almost of the uh, CD MP3 debate that we had for years, right? Oh, when yeah, MP3 yeah, yeah, players yeah. came out. I mean, I don't know if it's a debate. I mean, we all had the big book of CDs in our car. Or on like a, on like a little, um, you know, on the visor, you'd have a little thing that held a bunch of CDs, and you slide them out and put them in your CD player. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, I think, I, it's I, I think you're right of, though. So then that goes back to the whole um, ed tech thing too. I think mm -hmm. it's a matter of what is what is your learning style, what is your preference, what is what works for you. Because I will I will even talk to people who are not in my space they're looking at computers or they're looking at whatever and they'll ask me i don't even work in stores and they'll ask me you know i'm thinking about getting a chromebook i'm thinking about getting a pc i'm thinking about getting this and i said well what is it that you're trying to do and they'll tell me and i just give my two cents i said well if you're checking email then maybe you just need a chromebook or if you're just doing this maybe you need um this type of computer and so um people have like same thing like me, the music and MP3 thing. It's 
it's what you prefer. Like all of a sudden, like vinyl is back in play now. Yeah. Um, my daughter, I bought my daughter a, a record player. I have no. Really? Yeah, I did. Cause she nice. Wanted, she wanted she wanted a record player. I have no need for it because I just don't. I mean, I think it's cool. I don't listen to it. I mean, maybe I'll buy an album every now and then, but like where I'm at. It doesn't fit my it doesn't fit my personal lifestyle. So I think everything's about um, a, a lifestyle choice in your in your work. Style. So and that's kind of what I've learned in this gaming space, in this um, in this ed tech space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's why I love about esports and ed tech. I mean, it's it's not a one size fits all mm -hmm. type of approach. No. You were, you were an educator. Yes. Uh huh. And how long and where and what did you do and what grades and all that stuff. Oh. So, story time. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I this would have been my fourteenth year in education, thirteenth year in education, one of the two, and I started out as a um, science and social studies teacher. Okay. Third, fourth grade. And then I m moved on to be an instructional technology specialist. Ironically, right. Bubba, you know how I got that job? <laughs> I got that job. I will never forget it. And I hope I, I hope my former boss is watching because I know she remembers. <laughs> yeah. I Oh, I actually won that. Um I was on a panel and I was showing what I did in class using video games. It's nice. so it's so nice. it's so bizarre because yeah. I, I realized like dang I've been around video games all my life. And I, I showed uh, I was talking Texas history through Soul Calibur, and the kids were, I sh I was showing the kids like all right y'all we're gonna do we're gonna talk about you know the Alamo and we're gonna watch a, a video uh -huh. and the kids got you know the kids moaned and groaned but then when they saw what I made. Yeah. Um, they were like, "Oh my God, this is amazing! How did you do this?" Da, 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 da. When is the next series gonna come? I'm like, "Y'all, this took me like three days to create." <laughs> but uh, they were really excited, so I engaged them through gaming, and so that was one of the things that got me into being a instructional technology special. So for, from there, I did that for about what six, seven years. I got promoted mm -hmm. to being a coordinator of digital innovation yeah. for the whole entire district. Wow. So. That's when you know I, I really started working with our digital learning specialist team and program directors and uh, executive directors about implementing um, to, uh, digital learning and strategy in, to their curriculum. And then from there, while I was while I was kind of in that role, I I was uh, a chairman for our district technology conference for two years. And in that time frame, I started looking at uh, esports. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even know how I jumped into it, but I was like, okay, well, I, I really want to look at what this what what this is and how it can benefit students because I'm looking at what's what's next after I'm done with my tenure in um, yeah in um, being a chairman. So that's how I, I I delved into that. And remember, Bubba, that was like let's say four, three, four, five years ago, where if, I, if I'm if i talking to you about esports, you're like, uh, uh, um, yeah, we'll talk later about that, you know? <laughs> um, that's not on our radar right now. But now, it's, of course, you know, it's, it's a different conversation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. That's really cool. So, but, um, it, so, so you, it was all just because of the first time you showed your kids, what what game was it? What game were you doing? In Soul, Soul, Cal Soul Caliber. So, but <laughs> Texas, yeah, yeah. Well, I, oh, I grew up in Oklahoma. Say, I grew up in Oklahoma, so, you, so we had we had Oklahoma history. You know, we didn't have Texas history. We were in school. And uh, so, uh, I'll have to find that video. I have it uh -huh. somewhere, and I'll and I'll send it to you. Uh, nice. So I had to get really creative with that, and I had like little words going at the bottom, and I had <laughs> had to find certain I had to find certain characters that kind of looked like I think it was Santa Ana and somebody else, and um, 
and they were they're just talking and they're just they're just literally like fighting and i had to find areas that kind of look like you know that look like you know the area of the alamo you know you can only work with what mm -hmm, you have mm -hmm. but like it was it wasn't the fact it was the fact that they were engaged and they saw them the, them fighting and they were reading what was what i wrote down yeah and they really en they really enjoyed that so they were asking me, "Well, can you do more? Can you do more?" I'm like, "Oh, this is a lot. This is a lot." Uh, I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't think it was gonna be, be this big. Yeah. Um, and I didn't, I didn't get a chance to um, make any more. I really want to, but you know, making videos like that, it's a lot. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, I remember the conversation, the earlier mm -hmm. conversations I had with that, with the panel. Because mm -hmm. of course that's all new. Again, this is years, years ago, mm -hmm. and you know I didn't get, I didn't get, um, you know, permission from parents to show the show the uh, to show this video. Of course, you know, Soul Caliber isn't like gory or nasty or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, sure. it doesn't show like a whole bunch of blood coming out. But you know, it's right. just it's it, you know it can get a lot. You know, it's teen, and I, it's I, teen I, above. Yeah, it, I, I chose the appropriate characters. Like, I didn't mm -hmm. put Ivy in there. You know, you know, Ivy's a lot. But, like, you know, um, I remember the conversation one of them had with me, like, you know, you might, they, they said, you know, you might want to consider um, being careful with the violence in the game. And that, that, that. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, you're right. I didn't think about that. I was, I, my mind was like, I really want to, I don't want the kids to read it out of the book. Yes, reading out of the book is important. I really want them to look at this from another lens. And so that was my whole entire focus. I remember my wife saying, if these were your own kids in the classroom, what would you have done? Nice. And I'll, and that's when it, um, that's when it triggered that I needed to do something a little different. So that's kind of that was my big huge ticket in but mm -hmm. it, after realized that after realizing that going back over the years i'm like dang it i've been around games all of my all of my life even teaching my son how to how to read through video games um i would turn on like you know the typical um uh, you know i'm sure you go through it with your kids now mm -hmm. where they want you to do reading logs Yes. And <laughs> you said that with, you, <laughs> I, I could hear you're like, yeah. it's, I mean, it's hey, it's a it's a it's gamified in a, in some aspects. So this is so Bubba, this is what I did. My um, and I'll and just and I'll just be transparent. My my son does not like to read. He just doesn't. He'll <laughs> read when he's supposed to, but he doesn't like to read. So I said, come on here. Come sit down. We're going to play a game. He goes, well, where are we going to play? I said, well, I'm going to play. You're going to read. Well, what do you what do you what am I reading? I said, we're going to play. Um. Uh, Batman Return to Arkham. He goes, what? I said, yeah. And I said, I'm going to turn on the captions and you're going to read the captions and I'm going to ask you questions. He goes, oh, okay. <laughs> wow. So I'm just playing and we're reading the captions and we're going all through Arkham. You know, mm -hmm. this is this is father and son. So, you know, I this is in-house. So, you know, I'm sure... I'm sure that game is not a, you know, appropriate, but you know this is between <laughs> this is between father and son. So I, yeah, I, I told yeah. I told him like you know don't be gone saying that your your daddy did this. This is uh, this, is, this is like the first digital beer is what you're talking right. about here. This is like, the first. Son, we're gonna have a I talk. Like that. This is the first <laughs> digital beer, but you know I had the captions going on and mm -hmm. we we were looking at you know different cutscenes and mm -hmm. things that he had to do and I said all right, like what does what does Bruce have to do? And I would say like Bruce. I wouldn't say Batman all the time. I would I would change him up so he <laughs> under, so he would understand the difference. Uh -huh. And I would say, okay, so what is his main objective? Mm -hmm. Okay, he Dad, he has to do this, 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 and this. Why does he have to do that, Dad? Because of this, 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 and this. Now, what can he do on the side side missions to get him to do this, 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 and this? He has to do. He has to do this, 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 and all. How can I build him up? Do this, this, and this, and this. All right. Let's re let's read, let's read on that. So he's reading. Do, 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 do. He, he, he's reading um, everything that I'm doing. I'm playing, a, uh, you know, a couple of fight scenes. Then we go to another scene. He's reading it. I'm asking him more questions. Same question that you would ask while reading 
um, a regular book. I'm asking the same type of things. Of course, I would. I guess I would notice a little bit more because I, I'm an educator, right? But I said, guess what? You read. You didn't read traditionally in the book, but yeah. we spent hours yeah. in reading, and it finally clicked yeah. with him because he saw it in that light, and he understood like main objective. He understood plot. He understood <laughs> setting. He understood all of those things that That's he was struggling with through the years, and so. I knew from there, and I know I'm jumping all over the place, but I knew from I knew from there that there has to be something with gaming that is engaging our students. You know, there are some students that engage differently than others. Sometimes a, a traditional book and a traditional writing is not going to get our kids in that way. And I learned that for myself is sometimes it doesn't yeah. get me in that way. Yeah. And so just watching my own kids and the way they interact and the way they write through video games uh -huh. is amazing. They don't necessarily, they aren't necessarily like the gamers where the, it's their career, but it's the way they maneuver in that space and how they learn is amazing. And so uh -huh. that's what I take in my job, in tech right. stuff, in uh -huh. NASEF, in, in, in everything that I do, I have these conversations. When I'm talking with you, I'm having these conversations and saying, hey, it's not just about us. Like, we're playing Knockout City, having a having a good time. But, like, let's even take a, take a deeper dive. I know we're in this main room, but if I take this ball mm -hmm. and I just throw it, let's talk about the math behind me throwing that ball. Mm. You know, you think little, mm -hmm. little things yeah. like that is where you can turn that into you know, a, a, a math problem. Like, see, like how you threw that, like that could yeah. be a math problem. Like l just, l l l huh. just little bitty things that people didn't even think of. Like, oh, right. if I if I did a, did a uh, I can't do it anymore. If I did a flip, <laughs> if I did a turn and a flip, how far will that, how far do I, how far will that ball go? Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. You know, right, same thing. Like, like you just got to a ball. If, if the outfit that I have on, uh -huh. if I have that, if it, I'm just making stuff up. If sure. the outfit that I have on, does that affect how far I'll, I'll be thrown as a ball. Little things like that that yeah. you didn't even think about. You know, um, Steve Isaac in, in, with Epic, you know, um, with his Fortnite stuff. Right. Amazing stuff. So there's so many layers mm -hmm. of this that a lot mm -hmm. of people just never even thought about that we can definitely bring into the classroom. And when I talk to, uh, and when I'm at work and I talk with people across the country, I say, you know, have you thought about it this way? It's right. not just about us sitting here playing, um, playing games and having a good old time. That's great, but there's another deeper, deeper conversation. Chris Avilas, I mean, I'm dropping all these mm -hmm. people like Chris Returner, Chris Avilas, all of them. Like, there's so many layers to all of this that if you have a sit down conversation like what you're doing, Bubba, hey, like let's get deep with this. Um, a lot of eyes will be open. Right. For so sure. what you this is a lot of educating, but what, the your um the educators mass exodus that's happening, right? And Ooh, okay, <laughs> okay. What, okay. Hey, while, while we do that, let's try it. Let's try while we talk about that, and then move on to your new career. Um, okay. Let's try doing a like street play. Maybe if there's two people, it might be easier to find a lobby. Because okay, Chris, Chris Turner that. definitely doesn't like us playing with each other for this long. Did he say that? Yeah. In in so in so many words. What did he say? Chris, you're fired. I said please, <laughs> please play teams. That's how I took it. Please, for the love of God, quit playing each other. It will I, I, I tweeted uh Knock at City today saying, Hey, why are the lobby so long? What's the deal here? I just want to play a game. But is what it is. So if you're just if you're just chiming in, I'm here with Bradford Harris. Uh, we are learning and talking about education and Scholastic esports and gamification and kids and how games can be used to teach and how games can be used to teach that turned uh, Bradford's career into just an educator into so much more than he is doing now. We're gonna jump into some more conversation about <laughs> the mass exodus of teachers. And uh, SHI, where you work now. So, how's the awesome. how's the uh, finding a street play match going? Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're we gonna do. I think you, three, I think three v three. Are your other team? ones locked? 
Uh, did they show locked on the street play with you? I only have um forget that. Street play is play, street play, and then I, all I have is three v three team KO. I have three v I have T uh, three v team KO. I have double team KO. Yeah, I have chain reaction. Let's try double team T K uh, KO if it's unlocked for you. Okay. Because mine's not unlocked because I haven't played. I have to play five team KO matches. I couldn't even get into one of them, so couldn't unlock it. Oh wait, wait. It's I'm sorry. Me. I have wait. Uh, wait, mine is locked. Sorry. Okay. Try try team try KO three v three. There we go. Okay. We'll see how long the lobby takes us. Maybe it needed two people, and there's like one person sitting around, and uh, they're gonna join. And it. that was the reason why I also I I, mm -hmm. I I wanted to make sure that we were doing the private matches because it's ten o'clock, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> and I didn't want I didn't want us to wait. So that was another reason why. Um, <laughs> Because yeah. sometimes these can take a while. And we should have joined like a Spanish server or you know, a server in Europe or something. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't even know if that's how that works. In this think about that. I think it's just about lag. I have no idea. Okay, so let's talk about the mass exodus of okay. educators. And was do you feel like that was you? Or do you feel like you just, like, I wanted to move on? I, I've, I've built up this, uh, what I do in my career for gaming and esports and things you do in tech stuff. And I just want to move on. What, what was... What was the change? What was the change for you? My per okay, so my personal change, mm -hmm. I can only talk about me. Sure. Um, I co uh, being quarantined taught me a lot. Okay. Um, I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about my spouse, my wife. I learned sure. a lot about my. I learned a lot about my kids. Yes. There were some honest, hard. Mm -hmm. There's some honest heart truths in those conversations, and you know, just to be transparent with everybody in LinkedIn, there were some really hard truths, like knock down discussions, the things yeah. that was told to my face about me, and some things that I was telling them about them. But it there it needed to be said, and I don't think it would it would never have been said if we were not quarantined in that space. It was yeah. it was it was very healthy, and again, I'm ha I have young adults in the room and i and what i want people to understand is that i have the members of my family there's me in the quarantine space that has create that is helping to create with members of my team a distance learning plan okay i have another child who was always a virtual student so this was no big no big deal to her and then i have another child who's being pushed into this space because he goes to a public school. So, and then I, and then of course there's my wife that is the parent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So understand that there are three districts in one household. Okay. <laughs> so that's a lot. And so I will, I, I don't think I've ever said this in public. Maybe I have, but Imagine me in my office trying to get all this together, yeah. and my my young my teenage kids are saying, "Hey, so what are you doing?" Like, I'm trying to get my life together. I'm trying to get uh -huh. this all together, and they look at me and say, "Well, I wish you the best of luck because this is not gonna work." <laughs> and I said, "What?" <laughs> and they looked at me dead in my face and said, "This is not going to work," and they walked away, hmm. and I I couldn't argue with them i couldn't reason with them i i i was like okay so but Team you know there was uh that's another that's a, that's for another interview right. <laughs> but uh, hey i think but, you're you might check your group chat if you're talking in game i don't know i, I was off and on um so okay. the but you had well let me t let me tell you about what i learned from all that, that I, i'm leading I, I, i'm leading up to something um, okay. I, I, I learned about myself. I learned about, um, and I don't know if I do have my group chat. So hopefully nobody's hearing me. They're probably saying, "Where are you talking what about?" Is uh, <laughs> Who's this guy? So if, if they if they hear me talking, I'm sorry, you guys. Um, I, I I learned a lot. And again, these are my two kids were graduating within those two years. So at that at that time. Um, I I did a lot of self reflecting, and then when my son walked across mm -hmm. the stage, yeah, it was about okay, Bradford, what are you gonna do? 
You now have two kids that have finished K-12. What's next for you? Um, I'm not saying that you've conquered esports or anything like that, but like, it's time to start narrowing your focus. And where I was at, and where I was at in my career, I felt for me personally, Bubba, yeah, that my career, uh, my, my for me professionally, and I think I've never said this out loud to anyone. Mm, okay. so I guess you all, you all are finding it out now that I felt like for me, I was all over the place. I wasn't, for me prof professionally, I, w I, I my, my, my focus wasn't narrowed and I needed it to be narrowed. Yeah. And, and I wasn't getting that. And I remember having that conversation with myself in the car and I burst, burst into tears and it was a conversation and, and Bubba, I don't know if you're religious or not, so I'm going to be a tiny bit religious. I, oh, I remember having the converse conversation Safe with place. God. Uh, have a conversation with God, and what God told me, He said, if you're really wanting to do this gaming and esports thing, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to walk away. He told me that. You're gonna have to walk away because what you're doing right now is a lot. If you want to narrow your focus, you're gonna have to step away. And I burst into tears because I mm. knew that's what I had to do. Oh, right. That's yeah. what I had to do. You were called, you were, I was you called were listening. To do it. Mm hmm. And I listened, and I tried to fight it. Well, no, I can do it here. No, I can do it here. No, I can do it here. He, he or she, whatever you believe in. Yeah, right. They said, nope, <laughs> you've got to go. You've got to go. And so it was, and it wasn't me running away. So it wasn't me trying to say, okay, I got to get out. It's time for me to get up out of here. It was just, I just kind of had to start like looking at things from a different perspective. So long. <laughs> uh, long came Dr. Katrina Atkins, uh -huh. <laughs> and we had some conversations. And I know she was looking. Uh, I know she was looking at things that I was doing, and yeah. she asked, "Well, how do you feel about you know esports and education it's technology?" And I, you know, gave my, I gave my two cents about it. And I said, "This is the kind of things that I want to do. I want to be able to do." Uh, I am no help to this yellow team. Hey, uh, um, this is this is a lot of fun though. To be honest, um, we're, we're winning. I want to be somehow. able to do what I I, I want to be able to do what I'm doing mm -hmm. uh, with a narrow focus, but I want to be able to help people all, across my state and across the country. Particularly, Bubba, here's my big thing. Particularly, people who look like me. Yeah. In the educational in in the educational technology space and in the esports space because I said that it's being underserved and I and I need for I need for directors I need for teachers I need for students mm -hmm. I need for anybody to, when I'm talking to them they say oh whoa uh, and they may not say it but I know sometimes they're thinking it well uh, there's this African American there's this black man in this space talking esports talking educational technology I mean, we may or may or not seen that before and that's important i've had students come up to me and say you know what i want to i never thought about doing these things until i saw you in this space mm. and that's important and so i want even if i don't get that very far i know i'm trying to do my part by being in this space and asking those critical conversations of what are you doing for students of color for computer science for esports for digital learning all of those things here's how we can navigate those conversations wow, here's how dude. we can help build out your technology program your esports program and so those are the conversations that i've had with katrina too and that's how i got that's how essentially i got hired on katrina may say a lot more <laughs> than what i'm saying but um that's how I got really hired on, and now it's been my focus. I do everything from home. I've done everything that I've, I didn't think I, I that I've that I've dreamed of. I mean, you see my space now, Bubba. Like, uh, yeah, I have gaming consoles in my room. You see that little Pac-Man ghost behind me. I can game all day. I can talk technology all day, and. I had I I feel like I hold people's attentions for like a good thirty minutes on what they need uh, in their classrooms in their spaces, and I help plan and strategize with them. 
whether they move on with us or not, but the fact that they are uh, they're listening to me and they want to thrive in this space is amazing, Bubba, and I really mm. love it. And so, and I'm I feel more at peace. And and I'll make and let me make this clear: it wasn't this, it wasn't a, a district thing. It was okay. more of something that was in me that I needed to do this. Now, for everybody else, there's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> and so when people ask me the conversation of, well, what did you do? How did you do it? I said, well, you got to find something within Blue yourself. Like, you got to decide, Yeah. It, it, are you ready to make that leap? Um, I'll be honest with you, Bubba. Like, for me, this is what, when I left, that was like, that was like again, 12, 13, 14 mark. I have a lot of older educators that kind of look at me like, you're doing this now? And I said, if I don't do this now, I'm going to be stuck, and I don't want to be 50 years old thinking this is what it is. Now, yes, there's this education mass exodus, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. um, next year, it's going to be something else. The year after that, it's going to be something else. And I know a lot of some of my educator friends, uh, and some who are not, They've gotten numb to it, and like, and they go, "Oh, well, this is what it is." And I said, "I don't want to be, you know, 50 years old thinking this is what it is. I want to be 50 years old playing. I want to be 50 years old playing Knockout City with right. you, right. having a good old, having mm -hmm. a good old time, talking about how this can help be better educators and students uh, of all kind. You know, I want to be able to have a plat platform." Um, and, and talk about this at any point in time, and it doesn't happen. It doesn't have to be remote. Remote is just icing on the cake too. But yeah. um, but I, it, 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 it's it's one of those things that you have to sit and have a have really true conversations with yourself and with your family. It wasn't an easy decision for for me to make. For for people with this mass exodus, it's not an easy decision for people to make. I think when people see it online, they see people leaving. I think what they see is people just running away and leaving. Bubba, in my opinion, this is mm -hmm. Bra only Bradford's opinion. Okay. Um, that's not an easy. That's not an easy <clears throat> decision. It's not for an educator to say, you know, I'm really going to walk away from this type of Final education round. or education altogether. Um, it's not, and it wasn't. It wasn't easy for. It wasn't easy for me. But I need to be centered. I needed to have a focus. Yeah. I needed to get some stress off of me. And so for other people, they may need to go to another district. Um, and that's what I tell people too. It, it's not about you finding another job. You know, it's not about you saying, oh, well, I'm going to go work at, you know, the SHI or another yeah. company. It could be like, I, maybe I just need to go to another district. Maybe I need to go be in another couple of positions. But now I think people are looking at how can I take care of myself mentally. And so that's really what I did. I think that's what a lot of educators are looking at right now is how can I take care of myself mentally? And yes. for I need, me, I, I have to. I, I'm taking a walk for my mental health. Ah, like one of those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And for me, I I want to continue. I want to continue this focus. I want to keep going with gaming. I I had I had a pilot going on in my district. I struggled deciding if I wanted oh, to yeah. stay or not. Um, but I was like, you know what? I feel like, and I will never forget it. A friend of mine said, "You will make a bigger impact doing what you did for the whole entire country than what you did for the district." And nice. I was like, wow. I "Like that? Yeah, let's go." That's that was because I was empowering. like. I, I would I will never get she told me that I'm like but I'm like I want to stay I want to stay I want to do this so I want to do this for and I, I'll be honest I want to do this for the children that look like for, look like me in our district and she told me you will make a larger impact because she said I I, I just I understand 100 percent of what you're saying but you will make a larger impact by speaking about what you're doing across the country, then you will be here and they'll see it more. And I go, I never looked at it that way. I never looked, I never thought about it in in, in that way before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of what I do now. So I, that's great. No matter if I'm speaking for TechSef, no matter if I'm speaking for NASEF, no matter what, if I'm speaking for SHI, I'm always talking about 
um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Great. Uh, when it comes to their programs, making sure that are you thinking about these things? Are you reaching out to, um, uh, you know, children of color? Are you reaching out to LGBTQ plus things like that to making making sure that um, everyone is being served to the best uh, best of their their ability? So, but I'm I'm, I'm really loving it, Bubba. I'm, I really am. I, I never thought I, I never thought that I would be in this stage of my career doing. <laughs> doing what I'm doing. I always say my my ten year old self is probably super jealous right now that I'm sitting here <laughs> talking about technology right? and playing, and playing games. games. Uh -huh. So yeah. Well, I'm having and a I, ton of I, fun right now. By the way, this is a lot of fun. Why we're doing is this, this earlier? Is this your first time playing Knockout City? No, that's the first time. Um, the first time playing it with somebody that's not a. See, this is this, yeah. This is this, this is my first time actually playing it with somebody. Either. Yeah, yeah. I will, you know, and, and the funny thing is, believe it or not, I'm very. I don't know what the word is. It took me a, Bubba. It took me a long time to like play with people online. It really, it really did. It, it really did. Um, and I don't know why. I mean. You could say you're you're afraid of the toxicity and all that blah 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 stuff, maybe. But yeah. um I don't think that was really it. It was more of I don't want people to think that I'm a bad player. <laughs> uh because you, you you have this stigma of when you go online, oh my god, everybody's good online. Um so like it took me a while to really jump into, believe it or not, the online space. It really did. Um mm -hmm. And the game that I chose to play online, believe it or not, okay. was Uncharted. <laughs> there we go. There was, the, you know, there's that online component. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just try it. You know, let me turn myself off a of mute uh, mm -hmm. uh, and off chat so people don't think that um, I'm not doing... Um, I'm not doing it, uh, anything. Yeah. Um, but um, so I got to that and I was like, okay, well then I can do this. Uh, it's okay. I'll just find like the right games that, that are that are for for me. And so that was it. That, that was a huge step for me. A huge huge step. Yeah. My phone ringing. Well, man, I I enjoyed that last game. That was fun. I'm I, now I want to play some more. I feel like I was doing good. Obviously, the the lobbies are matched with people who are our level. But, uh, yeah, uh, I, yeah, I played it like that. Yeah, before. it was good. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well, thank you for coming on, man. I I really I I loved, man. I loved everything. You, I'm very educational. You are a teacher, that's for sure. I I teach in higher ed, and the college space, but uh, students, it, it's a different space, right? It's uh, I'm, students, I'm learning... students don't want to be there. Oh, okay. So, Bubba, I'm learning the higher. Okay, that's new territory for me. I'm mm -hmm. learning higher. You know, I'm K twelve through and through, but like, I I went up north, and I learned. I got a glimpse to what higher ed was about, and I and, and I'm loving it. Of course, you know, I'm getting my my doctorate, so I'm going back into school. And then my daughter, she's uh, it back in school doing that stuff. So I'm in that higher ed space, but like. I'd love to pick your brain more. We don't have to do it on here, obviously, because we're in, we're on the pa this panel. But um, just being in that higher ed space, what does it mean? I picked uh, Dr. Katrina Atkins' brain a lot, but like <clears throat> this is completely new territory. Uh, I ask higher ed questions every day, like, does this happen in a higher ed? How do you navigate uh -huh. this higher ed? How does this work in higher ed? Sometimes I hear like. It's the same thing in K twelve too. I'm like, really? <laughs> do you want to so, know more? Do you want to know more about the technology side or the esports side or just the educational side? I, just as as much as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. um, I've taken now. I've taken a you know my year off of <laughs> of teaching, so to speak. And I was yeah. talking to uh, Dr. Katrina Atkins about like, you know, I want to get back into the uh that space obviously virtually where i want to start maybe teaching a course um yeah, yeah. maybe in, 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 in gaming and so i i don't i don't know where i want to uh want to start with yet but I'm, I'm dabbling but right now like grad school year one <laughs> is right. a lot yeah. Yeah. so i'm just I'm, right now this whole year is about just getting acclimated into 
What does it mean to work from home? What does it mean to be in grad school? What does it mean to uh, really navigate through SHI? What does all that mean as I'm being a part of NASEF and TechSEF and doing all of these things? So this whole year is like a whole big learning year. So there's a lot of things that like I, I, I step away from now. So as I'm going back into the fall, I'm thinking about, okay, what things can I enter into, but also remembering that I have to learn how to kind of stay back a little bit because just because I am working from home doesn't mean that I have, you know, all the time in the world. I just probably have, and I said this to somebody yesterday, I probably have an extra hour or two, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's, it's different. It's, it's different. So, but that's, that's what this whole year is about. This whole year about is now a big self-reflection mm -hmm what's what are my next steps as i keep moving forward um with my uh with all of my teams my nasef team my shi team which is awesome i know they're watching this or they'll watch the recording of this later so i know they're supporting me but all uh, everybody that i'm in contact with um how can i be a better support how can i support myself first and foremost how can i take care of myself in this new space that i'm in love it well if if you chimed in today and you got to learn a little about Bradford Harris, you are a lucky person, and uh, we appreciate, appreciate everybody that, who Bubba. yeah I appreciate everybody who's been here today. I'm gonna give you the uh, the the solo screen, and you can talk about SHI and TechSef and everything that's going on in your space and where sure. to find you on social. So take it away. Awesome. So you can find me first off at edtechtinker.com on Twitter. LinkedIn is Bradford Harris. You can find me on there. I always forget how you can, how you can navigate that space. But for SHI, um, you can go to our link shi.com forward slash esports. And what that where that does is we gets all the information of everything you want to know from us about esports. There is an esports playbook at the bottom that was just released. It was it's awesome. Um, great labor of love. Anything that if you're interested. And learning how to just get esports into your program, or you're a you know an expert, no matter what level you are in, there's something in there for you. So go to that uh, site shi.com forward slash esports. That's there. Um, also, there is you know I'm with I'm wearing I'm sporting the NASEF today. Um, I am a NASEF Scholastic mentor. Feel free to go to that site to check them out as well. Uh, where you can access their curric uh, curriculum, learn what it means to be a fellow if, if uh, you're interested in being a part of that. Um, great people to be around. Uh, have to also give a shout out to my state people at TechSEF, Texas Scholastic Esports Federation. Um, we are hosting our tournament, our our face to face tournament, April 16th um, in the Dallas area. So if you're in that Dallas area, go to our website, techsef.org. That's T-E-X-S-E-F.org. And there's information on how you can um, join and come and uh, participate in that. So, yeah, so that's all of my information. If you have any questions about how to implement esports into your school, feel free to reach out to me. And definitely, I can get you started. My team can get you started. So happy to help. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Bradford. This is great. I, I I think we could spend another three, four hours talking about stuff. We didn't, we didn't there's so much stuff we didn't cover. There's so much stuff we yeah. didn't cover, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll maybe we'll do a part maybe yeah. we'll do a part two. I, we do. I, I, we I do. love I, I love that you do this. This was this was great. I've never done an interview like this. This is awesome. This is awesome. I love well, it. Well, I, I stole the ideas from Jack Black and the Hot Ones Hot Wings thing. The I had hot wings, the hot one hot takes or whatever, where the guy eats buffalo or like hot wild wings and does interviews with people. You know what I'm talking oh. about? Oh, yeah. Like okay, he, okay. He interviews okay. celebrities. He interviews celebrities and they eat hot wings and they they die and they drink water and milk and cry. Oh yeah, and so yeah, it's yeah, extremely yeah, yeah, yeah. hard to answer questions. So I, that one and then Jack Which Black. Which is why goes, you beat me in Knockout City. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I oh, get it awesome. now. I get it now. Because I was thinking, well, what game can I play that I don't look like I'm such a loser? But then I was a loser uh, anyway. But I, it's okay. Because when we played, when we played, when we played trios. I think you were you were pretty good there. You, I got knocked out a lot. It's, yeah, I, I had to. I had to kind of make sure I was on my game last night. I'm like, let me practice a little bit so I know what I'm doing. 
Awesome. Well, uh, Bradford, thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to put you off back into the back room and uh, okay. I'll, I'll catch up with you in about five minutes or less. And I appreciate you, man. This has been great. No problem. Happy right. to be here. Thank yeah, you I'll, so much. I'll, I'll catch up with you in a minute. All right. Thank you guys so much for being here on Invite Scent. We've had a ton of fun today. I, I learned a lot about Knockout City while learning about uh, how to do better with my kids, with my family, how to uh, work in the education space and gamify everything uh, from how how a ball is thrown in the air. So, man, I, I had a ton of fun. I really could spend a lot more time with Rapper learning and talking. We didn't even get to talk about enough Texas stuff that's really amazing that him and Danielle are doing down there and Patrick and, and others um, in Texas, which is leading, leading the Scholastic space. And... All the fun times that we, we have had over the years. I know I met Bradford, uh, I think, at in Houston at uh, the TCEA conference. So, yeah, it's been great. I, I really appreciate when educators come on and they talk about what's happening in the space. And then now, you know, he's working in the technology space and just bringing that, that, uh, that, that good, good, good vibes from education. So thank you for being here at Invite Send today. This is a live interview show where we interview people and play video games. I appreciate you all. Stay amazing. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Mm -hmm.